Well, we're here in Madison Square Garden with Hall of Fame boxing promoter Bob Arum. I mean, how many shows have you done here? Do you even know, Bob? I don't remember how many shows, a whole lot. And the first fight that Top Rank did, we had a company before Top Rank, uh, was Ali and Oscar Bonavina, uh, December 7th, 1970. Well, here we are. It's 2022. We're in the light heavyweight division. We've got a huge unification bout between Joe Smith, Artur Baturbiev. You promote both guys. So you were, I mean, what, what are you going to do? Uh, how, how are you, you going to cheer when one lands? I know Frank always struggles when he promotes both guys. No, I just watch the fight, uh, hoping that it's a really good fight and hoping that it pleases the fans because this should be a fight of the year candidate uh, and whoever wins is going to win and uh, my pulling for one guy or the other is not going to affect the outcome. Tell us about the significance of this fight then currently in world boxing. Baturbiev of course has knocked out every man he's ever faced. He's highly ranked pound for pound and Joe Smith's that common man who just keeps on winning. Yeah, I mean the two really good fighters who have tremendous punching power and very pleasing for fans. So you can't ask for more. Uh, Better be off uh, is a little bit more stoical, although Joe is pretty stoical. Uh, Better be off uh, uh, because obviously English is not his first language. I mean, he's a Russian speaker, he's a French speaker, but he gets by in English. Uh, he's been a wonderful uh, guy to promote. He's very cooperative. Uh, and I think if he wins, uh, uh, the English fans will embrace him. Well, they may well embrace him because uh, not only will he uh, have won a great fight, but there is a certain Mr. Anthony Yard who is here this weekend. He'll be uh, ringside watching. I was with him for the weigh-in. I asked him who he picked to win, and he just said, I'm picking myself. Where does Anthony Yard fit into this big light heavyweight picture? Well, uh, you know, uh, Frank is a mate of mine, Frank Warren, and we've arranged that... Uh, uh, we would endeavor to have the winner of this fight, uh, fight Yardy, uh, in the UK, in London, uh, sometime in the fall. Uh, so uh, we've been able to talk to the Better Be Of people, and that deal is done. So, But we have a co-promoter with Joe Smith and uh, Joe DeGuardia, so we'd have to sit down and talk with them. But that would be my goal. Whoever wins this fight to go over to London to fight Yardy. And what's your knowledge of Anthony Yard? I mean, it was three years ago he first challenged for a world title against Kovalev, came up short there. Has he appeared on the US radar much since then? No, that, I mean, the only thing that I could be honest, uh, the only uh, fight that I've seen him in was with Kovalev. So as it stands then, I mean, I guess if, you, if you've only seen that fight, how do you rate his chances against the winner of the fight on Saturday night? Well, you know, you, you know, uh, Frank is a good boxing guy. And Frank said Yardy is an accomplished fighter, uh, which I believe he is. Uh, and uh, I think he's number one in the WBO. So rather than wait for the WBO to say it's a mandatory fight, we just make a deal and put it in the UK uh, on uh, uh, in the fall, in Oct probably in October. And the idea of the champion traveling to the UK, from your perspective, is that a, a case of trying to uh, build their brand overseas? You know, I just think that there are a tremendous number of boxing fans in the UK, and uh, I think it will do best uh, from a revenue standpoint in the UK. We'll do it in the evening, on a Saturday evening in the UK, and we'll send it back here on ESPN or ESPN Plus, uh, and it'll be in the afternoon. See, people forget, but, you know, through the 70s and 80s, we did so many fights uh, uh, across the pond, whether it was France or Germany or England or Italy, 
And we did those fights in the afternoon, obviously, in the U.S. because of the difference in time. So, um, again, I don't think there's, that's an impediment at all. And, you know, the uh, uh, British Board of Boxing Control uh, cooperates with us uh, so we can have neutral officials, at least judges, uh, for the fight. So, I mean, the ring is the same, you know. I, you know, people, oh, I don't want to go to England because it's, a, you know, uh, give them too much of an advantage. But guys like Better Be Off and Joe Smith are too smart for that. They know as long as you level the playing field, uh, it's not going to be an advantage particularly for, for, for Yardy. And on Better Be Off in particular, where you, where you said that that deal is, uh, is more or less done should he win, um, what's the reaction from him about that? You, you said, how is he just like, yeah, I'll go to England, no problem. He, he's the beast. Just he just just get him the opponent, and he looks at it as another meal. Well, they call Anthony Yard the beast around the UK, so it'll be interesting Is to see. Right? Well, we have two beasts in the ring. What could be what could be worse? <laughs> what could be worse? Look, the final one on the on the light heavyweights. The Ring Magazine have put Dimitri Bivol as the number one light heavyweight in the world. Uh, I'm not sure that was the case before his fight with Canelo Alvarez. Do you feel as though perhaps? a little too much stock is being put into that win and perhaps Baterbio should be number one? Remember, I take with a grain of salt what the Ring magazine or anybody else says and putting guys in number one or number two, who cares? You know, ultimately, I hope it'll be decided in the ring, right? Ultimately, Bivol will have his opportunity uh, to face... Uh, the unified champion that has three belts and he has one. Uh, And if not, not, you know, again, uh, I mean, Bivol may hold the WBA belt, I think, but he's hardly an attraction. I mean, the the Canelo-Bivol fight uh, died. I mean, Canelo is probably the biggest... Uh, attraction in the United States at the box office and that, that fight did terrible both from a gate standpoint and a pay-per-view standpoint so because nobody knows Bivol you, you understand if a fighter fights his fights on I call it dark zone nobody watches and there's also nothing backing it up because if they fight on ESPN or Heyman's guys fight on Showtime, at least there's a megaphone talking about the fight and the fighters. On the zone, nobody buys, nobody subscribes to the zone. It's, it is the dead zone, you know? And uh, like I told Haney when we signed Haney, and he went to Australia to fight uh, Cambosa, uh, which we showed on ESPN. Well, welcome to the sunlight. You've been fighting in the dark. And I think it's the same problem uh, in the UK. I mean, how many people are going to watch if a fight's on the zone? Right? Very few. I mean, uh, well, you know, again, it is very, very difficult to have a streaming service where you have just one sport like boxing. Impossible. Not enough for him. Not, it's not worth it. Now, then you, people say to me, what about ESPN streaming service, ESPN Plus? Well, go to it. You'll see all kinds of sports 24-7 being shown that people can pick. Uh, so again, you know, I wish, uh, the dead zone people, uh, uh, well, but, uh, I mean, to, to, to take a fight like, uh, Joshua and Usyk and bury it on the dead zone does nobody any good. 
Well, one man who certainly doesn't fight in the dark, he's just knocked out Dillian White in front of 94,000 people at Wem Wembley Stadium. He lit up Wembley Stadium. It's Tyson Fury. Now, one day he's doing interviews teasing a comeback. He's doing interviews with his wife and Piers Morgan. He talks about £500 million uh, pounds to bring him back. What do you think? Where do you think he is right now? Well, he's going to fight. He's a fighter. He's a fighting man. And I expect Tyson Fury back in the ring before the end of the year. Now, uh, uh, I think, for example, uh, if uh, Joe Joyce uh, wins his fight in early July, Tyson Fury and Joe Joyce uh, in Wembley in the beginning of October will do as well, if not better, I don't know how you can do better, but as well, uh, as the Dylan White fight uh, with Tyson Fury. And that will then uh, lead up uh, to a Fury fight uh, with the winner of Joshua and Usyk. Uh, and uh, I'll do the best I can to make sure that that fight takes place in the UK uh, because I don't think it's good for boxing uh, to take a fight uh, like that and put it uh, uh, in Saudi Arabia. I just think it's maybe you make some more money doing it that way, but I don't think it's right for the fans. You know, boxing is a sport uh, that uh, uh, depends on the enthusiasm of the fans. Uh, and uh, you would never think of taking the Super Bowl and moving it to Saudi Arabia, no matter what the Saudis are willing to pay, or a Premier League championship. Uh, so, you know, short term, it's probably advantageous uh, to go to Saudi Arabia and grab the money, but uh, long term, it's not good for the sport. Okay, Bob, look, I could speak to you all day, um, but I'm gonna let you go. Thanks so much for for having us this week and um, looking forward to the fight tomorrow night. Any, any final word? Yeah, you're going to see a great fight, to, I, I, I believe, uh, tomorrow night. And uh, uh, you'll also have the uh, semifinal with this Cuban kid, Ropesy, uh, who's fighting Abraham Nova. That's going to be a tremendous fight. So it'll be a good, good night in New York. Uh, Although I live on the other side of the country now, uh, I'm basically a New Yorker, so I love being back here. I think Anthony Yard's going to be a New Yorker now. He's, he's loving it. He's going around all the sites. We was watching the basketball last night. He might, uh, he might be adopted. Well, why not? I mean, it's a great city. But what, Anthony is from London. Yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's a great city, too. <laughs> we Americans love to come over to London. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, the restaurants are great, you know, the people are great. Uh, so I'm looking forward uh, to coming over this fall at least once, maybe twice, uh, if we can do a Tyson Fury fight uh, and uh, uh, enjoy uh, London. It's my wife's favorite city. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Bob, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you.